This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Young versus Adams. It's my understanding, Mr. and Mrs. Young, that you are suing your next door neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Adams, for injuries that Mrs. Young sustained when the Adams' as bats got in your house and attacked her. You're asking this court to award you $25,000 for your past medicals and $95,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $120,000. You were attacked by these kinds of bats? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Your Honor. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Adams, you all don't believe that this is your fault. First of all, you don't think these were your bats, and secondly, if they had cared for themselves, this never would have happened, true? Yes, yes Your, Your Honor. Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Uh, tell me what led to bats getting in your house. Yes, Your Honor. So we're avid DIYers, do-it-yourself. Uh, we love renovating homes and doing home projects. And so recently, my wife thought it was a great idea if we uh, converted the detached garage from my mother um, so it could be an in-law suite, a granny apartment, so to speak. There's still a lot that needs to be done, insulation, drywall, painting. Mm -hmm. And you can see we've already done some work on the, in the bathroom, but we had to stop to get a plumbing license. So at the time that this happened, you weren't finished? Correct, Your Honor. And you did all this to make sure your mother would have a place to be? Yes, Your Honor. My mother is getting old in age, and she's divorced. I happen to be an only child, so I wanted her close to me. That's a beautiful thing. Mr. and Mrs. Adams, how'd y'all come to have bats? We live a very different lifestyle. We do a lot of homesteading. We have a very natural life. We go through and we actually have a, a greenhouse and we plant our own vegetables. We have a chicken coop. We just, we live a very, you know, self-sustaining life. Minimizing your global footprint, huh? Absolutely. Okay, well, what's bats got to do with it? Both of our properties are backed up to some woods and there's a river back there which is home to a lot of insects, mainly mosquitoes. And so when we moved in, we noticed that there were a lot of mosquitoes, so much that we couldn't really enjoy ourselves out on our back porch. So we decided to do the all natural thing, which was to attract bats to our backyard to help control the mosquito population because bats can eat up to a thousand mosquitoes per hour. So bats do better than those mosquito zappers that you get at the hardware absolutely, store? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. We're an all natural family and uh, you know, unlike the youngs here, we don't like to spray pesticides or insecticides. We decide to do things as best we can in an all natural, eco-friendly way. Mr. and Mrs. Young, did you all know that they were kind of naturalists who... Uh... Oh, yes. I feel like we've actually been quite understanding of their naturalistic ways. They have chicken coops and you can imagine it's very loud, especially early in the morning and it's smells not so pleasant either. Um, Take me to the day that you got injured. I had pneumonia for a couple weeks and finally uh, I was actually feeling better and Justin and I actually had a weekend that we were off. So we we're gonna go ahead and start working on his mother's apartment again and um, that day he actually went to the garage to get all the tools and I went to the apartment by myself and I went to the bathroom just to like clear everything up because that's where we, we stopped last time. Okay. And I saw this um, spongy uh, mold on the shower part and I was like, okay, well we haven't been there in a couple weeks, understandably, so things might happen. And so I, uh, I got all my cleaning supplies and um, I started, uh, cleaning the, the spot and it actually jumped up at me and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't mold, it was actually a bat and, and there was, a, uh, there was wings and there was, um, like it kept biting at me and attacking me and, and I, I just, I thought that it was just that and then all of a sudden it felt like there were hundreds of bats everywhere and there was just wings and screaming and, and, and even now sometimes I felt, um, I have nightmares about that incident, and, and I just kind of... <laughs> so you originally thought this was a glob of some kind of mold from being left alone. You yes, disturb it, and it's a bat that attacks you? Yes, Your Honor. And you said there were others in there? there it felt like there were hundreds, at least. Sounds like a movie. That's exactly what it felt like, Your Honor. 
So I was in the garage and then getting the tools and supplies. I hear my wife scream and it's a bone chilling scream. I've never heard her sound like this. I run to the detached garage and I look and all these bats are just flying out like it's a movie. And so I, I go in, see my wife, she's in the fetal position laying in, in bat poop guano essentially so i'm trying to get to her i'm beating these bats left and right trying to get to her i pick her up and i rush her to the er because i think she might have rabies or contracted some other disease from that i see the scratches on your wife's arms i mean they this must have been really bad it, it was your honor it's been life-changing for us this was a real bad attack yes your honor <laughs> mr and mrs adams um y'all are next door how do bats get into their property we hate that this happened to them, and and we've. But we want to make a point that bats they don't just randomly attack human beings. They they have to be disturbed in order for that to happen. So yeah. if you're gonna scrub a bat, of course it's gonna freak out and bite you. They're 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 wild animals. They say that they're not responsible, but you guys had bat boxes. You to deliberately attract attracted bats. these bats to our to bat property. boxes, not to years. your garage. We there well, for folks, eight years without. What is a bat box? Your Honor, this is a bat box right here. That's and a bat box. This is yes. right okay, here. Yes. Okay, okay. I so, wasn't sure what that was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the bat box. So inside of this is, uh, they're just ridges, like just on the outside of this. So or, they can hang. Right, so they just put their claws in, they just hang upside down, and they stay there. Hold on, please tell me you don't have a bats in there. Right? We this one, no, no, no. Oh, okay, no, no, no. okay. No, of course okay, not. No, no, no. Check for you. Like, like, a, like no. a fifth grader. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, so you it's not put, show and tell. <laughs> you put these bat boxes so. on your property? Several, Your Honor. Yes. M more than one? Yeah, there's three. We right three. by the his mother's. Right so, by but again, line. they are on the our property. But the are. purpose for the bat boxes is to have somewhere to stay. Yes, Your Honor. So it's kind of like a bat motel. Yes, Your Honor. How many of these bat boxes did you have on your property? Three, yeah, three. Your Honor. But this kind of makes y'all Batman and Batwoman, right? <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> so, Mr. and Mrs. Young, you all believe that that the bats belong to them because they invited them to the property. Yes, yes Your, Your Honor. Honor. It's, it's very obvious. We've been in this house for eight years, and for the past year, uh, we've we've seen an uptick in bats. For seven years, our detached garage have, has never had any bats. They actually put bird bats in their front yard, and that apparently we've done the research is something that bats are attracted to. It gives them water. It gives them somewhere to, to chill. It's like a freaking bat oasis or something. I had a cat come by my house one time, and I was kind to that cat. I gave that cat a can of tuna fish. That became my cat as long as I fed it. Aren't these your bats if you give them a place to stay? Your Honor. They, they... We don't consider these bats our pets. We haven't named them. I, I assume, did you, Your Honor, did you name the cat? Uh, no, I just called him Cat. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Young, you all are asking this court to reimburse you for $25,000 in medical expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Tell Your me Honor. about that. After I rushed her to the ER, she had to get treated for rabies, and it was That's a very really trying scary. ordeal. And she can tell you more about that. Have you, you seen a rabies that. shot? It's the, the needle's very long, and it's not just one shot. It's like you have to go there several times. According to your medical papers, you had a, a condition called histoplasmosis. Yes, Your yes, Honor. Honor. I actually thought that it was just pneumonia again, because um, I was getting chest pains. I, was, I kept coughing. There was one day when Justin and I were just cleaning the house, and I was standing over the sink and all of a sudden that's the last thing I remember. You passed out. Yes, Your Honor. So yeah. while, while she's cleaning the sink, I just noticed all of a sudden we're mid-conversation and she just goes flat. She had a seizure, Your Honor. So this was a real sickness following this bat attack. And not yes, only Your that, Honor. But My wife could have died. I mean, it's, it, it's been terrible. To understand these bats, because it doesn't sound like any of us really understand what they do, this court has consulted a bat expert, Mr. Robert Hood. Sheriff, will you get Mr. Hood and bring him in the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Now, you know bats, right? Yes, I've been working with bats for over 20 years now. How is it possible that a homeowner gets bats in their house? Well, bats are very small mammals. So as a homeowner, if you're not spending the night in the attic or if you're not outside at dusk and dawn... That looks like a, a rat with a good PR agent. <laughs> it, it's crawling yeah. into holes. That's what bats do? They crawl into the holes in your house? Yes. So as you can see, that if there's a gap the size of your thumb, the bat can fit into it. So it's very difficult for a homeowner to 
notice that these areas are around their home. What are the complications of a bat infestation? One will be the threat of rabies. If you had some bats that are active and came down into the living space, you could be scratched or bitten, and of and, course, and contract rabies. And that's how it looks in people's attics? Yes, that is. So that's a, that's a particular attic that I went to that had hundreds of bats flying around. Uh, another problem that you can have is histoplasmosis. It's actually a fungus that grows on accumulation, large accumulations of guano. So if you are breathing those spores, then of course you could possibly contract histoplasmosis. And what is, is guano? The, guano is the fecal matter, or the excrement, that's left behind from the, from the bats that are roosting. Well, how do you get rid of them? Well, essentially a professional comes out, going to look at the home, any type of gap that you have that a thumb can stick into, 306 degrees around the house, about four feet off the ground to the tip of the roof, needs to be sealed. And in the place where they're coming in and out, you have to put up an apparatus that allows them to fly out, but they can't re-enter in the morning. So essentially, we evict the bats. Well, I got to call you Batman. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome, y'all. You are released, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Young, how far are these bat boxes from your garage where you were building this apartment? They're probably Not 10 far. feet or closer from the fence line. I would even say closer than You submitted a diagram to this court. I want you to explain it to me once we put it up on the plasma here. Could you go over there, Mr. Young? <clears throat> OK, tell me what we're looking at. As you can see, this is my mother's apartment, future apartment. This backside is where the bathroom work was being done, the plumbing and whatnot. These are the bat boxes, so they're not very far from the fence line. And then here's the Adams house there. All right, so you may return to the podium. Thank you so much. Thank you. They left the garage door open in this several nights. They're, they're, they're missing that piece of information to you. So you think it's pretty simple. They could have closed off things and it wouldn't have been a problem, right? Well, yes, Your Honor. They were over there back there. They're fixing up their apartment. They should be doing the necessary uh, duties of checking for those holes already. Mr. and Mrs. Young, you all are asking this court to award you $95,000 for pain and suffering. Tell me about that experience and why I should make that kind of award. After my wife had the seizure, it's taken a toll on our marriage as well as our home life. I'm not able to go out and do the, the home improvement stuff that we've been able to do. I'm also an outdoors person, perhaps not as granola as they are, but I do like the outdoors. And even then, I can't, you know, do things that I used to love. I get coughs a lot. Um, so you've got some fatigue, some cough, some lethargy that uh, doesn't allow you to do the thing with your And also the husband. medication I have to take for the histoplasmosis. It's also expensive. I, I'm a little surprised that you all have not put a little more heart into this. We did, Your Honor. Well, we hold, actually... hold on. Yes, sir. You invited these bats to the property. It is no coincidence that there are bats in their property once you put these boxes out. I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case such as this, the plaintiff has to prove three things. You've got to prove that the defendants were wrong. That's the first thing. You've got to prove that their wrong caused your harm. The legal issue is, are the Adamses responsible for this harm? Now, you all have put up evidence that you didn't have any problems with bats until they put the bat boxes out near your house. The way this should have worked is you finish the apartment for your mother, your mother-in-law, she moves in, and y'all never meet me. Instead, they invite hundreds of bats to the party. One or more or a hundred gets into your place. You go up to clean and disturb one of these bats, and you are viciously attacked. The law can compensate you by allowing a money award. However, the law does not relieve you of the emotional burden. It relieves you of the financial burden, doesn't relieve you of the physical burden. So I understand this is a weight on you in a bunch of respects. You all look at me with wonderment and say, how could this be our fault? These are wild animals. We were doing a good thing. We didn't want to go get a bug zapper. We invited bats. They would do it the natural way. In fact, these bat boxes were a benefit to the Youngses. There is harm, but frankly, folks, inviting bats to your property is not a wrong. 
Does it, does it cause us to have certain opinions about things? But they did not break the law, and there's nothing that says that this was irresponsible. Bats can get into anyone's home when they leave it open. Your home was left open. I don't blame you, but just like they invited the bats with the boxes, you invited the bats with your home being open. I find you did not prove that the Adamses were wrong, and I find against you and in their favor, despite how much I feel for what you all have been through, I find in your favor. That's my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> Ms. Wilson, it's my understanding that you are suing Mr. Atkins for hitting your foot with a forklift and tearing part of it off. You are asking this court to award you $250,000 for past medical expenses, $150,000 for future medical expenses, $2 million for scarring and disfigurement, and $2.7 million for pain and suffering for a total award of $5.1 million. That's what you want, right? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Atkins, it's your position she shouldn't have been there, and if she had been responsible, this would have never happened. Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, Ms. Wilson, why'd you file this lawsuit? I started working. I went into shipping, a warehouse shipping, and six months ago, I was promoted as supervisor in a male-dominant area. Women are changing the world, getting we into are, the guy's stuff. We are, we are. <laughs> You're enjoying it? I love it. So, uh, Mr. Atkins, tell me about your job. What do uh, you do? I'm a truck driver. Truck driver been in the family for the longest of times. You know, my grandpappy did it, my dad did it, and now I'm doing it. Two of my brothers are truck drivers. Oh, that's great. You deliver things, I take it? Yes. What we, kinds uh, of things do you deliver? We deliver whatever a client may need. We do, We work for about 50 companies. Okay. Uh, we transport to over 100 locations. So, Ms. Wilson, what went wrong here? I am looking over my inventory, making sure everything is correct. No one is in the warehouse but me. Why would that be? Is it a break or something? Yes. All my employees are going on break. Okay. That's when I know there's no machinery on. It's no reason for any nothing to be going wrong at this point because I'm the only one there. Your Honor... First, I'd like to say, why would you have all your employees at lunch at the same time? Okay. It's a time schedule. How so, are you Wilson, and I, and I because of your personal that agenda? Simply because like, why are you doing that? I'm Look how much time that you're wasting safety. by doing this. Mr. Atkins, talk to me. So, Ms. Wilson, tell me what happened. As I'm in the warehouse and I'm going through my stuff and I'm stepping back and as I'm going back, I get this, this sharp pain until my left heel where he is on my forklift and slants into my left heel. Oh, no. I'm down. I'm on the ground. Did you know you had struck her, her leg or her foot? I felt a little bump, and I seen it in there, and as soon as I seen it, I caught and Is got she help. down on the uh, She's concrete? down on the ground, yeah. You remember this, obviously, Ms. Wilson. Yes, I was down. I was screaming. I was in pain. I've never in my life felt this type of pain before, ever. So there's no one really around but you and Mr. Atkins Correct. at this point. So then what do you do? I blacked out. When I woke up, I was in the hospital. Mr. Atkins, do you remember this, this incident? Yes, Your Honor. Tell I... me how this happened from your perspective. So this is a company that I've been working with for four years now. Okay. So, so basically what you do, you pick up a load... Yes. ...and then you deliver it to the warehouse. Yes. Right? When you get to the warehouse, is there a certain routine that you go through to the... deliver your load? It's always you get there drop your load off to somebody, they take care of it, but sometimes they can't take care of it. So because I'm certified and driving a forklift, they, they gave me the okay to go ahead and do it. So, Ms. Wilson, on this day when Mr. Atkins brought his load, what was he supposed to do? Um, Your Honor, he's supposed to wait on staff. He's supposed to wait on them because they are the ones that help unload the truck. And when he gets out of his truck, he's supposed to sign his name, time, and date, and that's when I will come and I will signature off showing that he did come and make the drive. And then once he completes the paperwork, your staff grabs the forklift and unloads the truck with your forklift. Yes, sir. Mr. Atkins, you actually went in and got the forklift yourself. Yes, I did. The manager, previous manager, told me that I had the authorization to do that. So to be clear, you knew about the policy. Yes, I did. Folks told you you could do it another way. That's why he got fired, the other supervisor because of the situation of him coming in and doing what he wanted to do. It didn't work that way. 
So how's he supposed to know that we're doing it differently? This has been a rule that's been going on before I even became supervisor. But, it, but he said for years he's been allowed to do this. Yeah, Why wouldn't correct. he just do it the same way? No, sir. Not on my watch. Because safety is my protocol and that's what I'm going by. If they can't get with it, then... And, and so what happened to your foot? I have a hole in my foot this big, in my heel. They had to take muscle out of my left thigh to place inside of my heel to try to give me somewhat of a balance. Yes, ma'am. But it would never be the same because I'll forever have, like, a limp. I would have hip problems. I mean, my whole life is completely shattered. I can never wear heels again. Yes, I've done all kinds of stuff. I used to travel. I have children. Yes, ma'am. You still you know, travel. And I, I have all these... I have responsibilities. My husband is sick. I'm the breadwinner in my family. Yes, ma'am. You know, and Well, so... to further understand your injuries, I want to call Dr. Darren Newfield to explain this injury from a medical perspective. <laughs> Sheriff, if you'll get Dr. Newfield. Yes, Your Honor. Doctor, for the record, state your name. Dr. Darren Newfield. And what kind of doctor are you? I'm an orthopedic surgeon. Doctor, tell us the nature and severity of Ms. Wilson's injury. Well, she sustained an injury to her calcaneus, which is the heel bone. This image shows her calcaneus and the multiple bones that were fractured. So this forklift basically took her heel off. Yeah, we call it a crush injury because it's not just an injury to the bones. There's also a significant injury to the soft tissues around the heel. The muscles, the tendons, the nerves, the arteries can be involved. And so with a crush injury, our biggest worry in the beginning is for infection. Okay. And so we have to take the person to surgery multiple times usually to wash out the heel, remove any debris from the forklift or from her shoes. And then then she's left with a big soft tissue defect. Is, is it accurate to call this a life-changing injury? Oh, well, this, yeah. This is a life-altering injury, definitely. Sometimes, if the injury is severe, we do a below-knee amputation if you can't salvage the foot. The physician who did her surgery yes, sir. actually was able to salvage the foot. In order to fill in this soft tissue defect, they took skin and soft tissue and muscle from her thigh to cover the heel soft tissue defect. Ms. Wilson, how are you able to get around now? It's, I'm sorry, I get very emotional because this is like a super life-changing moment. Yes, ma'am. I see that you brought a scooter. Yes, is, is that something you have to use every day? I do, constantly. C can you show me how this uh, scooter helps you get around? Um, with it, I have to put my left leg into it and I have to move, move carefully around and I have to go like this. I mean, and it takes time, especially if you have to go to the restroom. So, so moving around your house, you have to use this scooter? Yes. I don't go to the stores because to me it's embarrassing. I don't want to be out like this. So, Ms. Wilson, the back of your heel was basically torn off. Correct. Now, I see you've got that boot on. Have you tried to wear shoes? I can't, and the reason why I can't is because of the heel. It's not healed completely, in which it probably never will be. Doctor, what, what's the future like for Ms. Wilson with this kind of injury? Well, it, it takes six months to a year f to just heal from the injury. The first six months, usually, you can't put your foot on the ground. There's no weight bearing. And in the second six months, that's when you do a lot of rehab and therapy just to try to regain as much function as possible. So is this scooter a lifetime apparatus for her? It may or may not be, depending on how much she can recover. She clearly has long-term deficits with her foot and ankle. It'll never be the same. She'll never be able to wear normal shoes. Will she be able to walk naturally? Maybe she could just wear flats or something like that. But... Oh. Yes. So don't be so insensitive about this. Uh, Your Honor, I, I'm This not... is an injury that you caused. Look at that. You cannot be callous about that. Our society puts a lot of pressure on women to be beautiful and perfect. You clearly can't be perfect. You still are a beautiful woman, but this has got a way on your mind. Tell me about that. It's, it's very emotional. And actually, I do some therapy sections because it has messed with me emotionally. I see here in, in that you're seeking $2 million for permanent scarring and disfigurement. Your, your foot is disfigured, isn't it? Yes, sir. I see also that you're asking this court to award you $2.7 million 
for pain and suffering. I imagine this never leaves your mind. It doesn't. This, is, this has re really been a life change experience for me. I also see that you have $150,000 for future medical expenses. Yes. Doctor, is that reasonable? Is that what she's looking at? I, it's, it's a reasonable amount, I would assume. She could have multiple more surgeries on this foot and ankle if it, she can save it. Sometimes we save it in the beginning, in the first couple of years, and then the patient ultimately goes on to a below knee amputation. So she may be facing an amputation. She still could lose this. Foot. If they're professionals, they should be able to save it. So you're a doctor well, now. Well, I, I'm not a doctor, but I so feel you like should, if you, wow. if Mr. Atkins, that title, Mr. Atkins, wow. I'm not going to talk over you. Wow. You are not a doctor, and you have not gone to medical school. But let me take you to law school. <laughs> When you are operating a forklift, you must do so responsibly, I not because you did it irresponsibly 1,500 times before. Every time you must take care. I see from your passion that you believe you did, but stay in your lane. Doctor, you may be released. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Mr. Atkins, you've seen the diagrams, you've yes. heard the testimony, yes, you've Honor. heard the doctor. Yes, Your Honor. You still just say, look, this is not my fault. See, again, Your Honor, I don't say that this isn't my fault. In the terms of me doing my job, I feel like I did what I did right. I did everything I needed to do. I feel like she was in the wrong place at the wrong time when the accident occurred. Tell me why you think that she was in the wrong place. The reason I feel like she's in the wrong place because, you know, she talks about how she... She cleared it out. No one should be in there. If you work in a factory, this is a known fact from any company anywhere that you should not be close to that danger zone at any time because you never know when someone will be operating a vehicle. Now, at you all. say a danger zone. You can go to the monitor. You can tell me why you say that's a danger zone. If you look right here, this is the danger zone. And as you can see, she walked backwards. If you're at a factory job, why would you walk backward? There's danger at any moment of time, no matter who you are, whether you're a supervisor who tells all your employees to leave or whether that everyone was self-aware. You have to be on your toes, male or woman. It doesn't matter. Your instinct has to be intact whenever you are in a factory. Miss Wilson, is that a danger zone where you should have stayed out? It is a danger zone, but I normally always keep the area clear. But no it matter what, no matter if it's clear or not, it is always told to take precaution and always look where you're going when you're walking. That's common sense, y'all. You may return to the podium. Thank you. Ms. Wilson, do you admit that this was a pathway that is usually kept clear for safety reasons? Yes, Your Honor. I, I mean, forklifts aren't really like tricycles. They make noise. They've got beepers. You can hear them. Why wouldn't you hear this forklift? On that day, because it's so loud in the warehouse, and I actually have... And to point out, my Your Honor, safety I, headphones. I was just talking to her. It's okay. I, I will get to you. I promise. I have my safety headphones, in which we have these. So you had those on this day? Yes, sir, I did. Are those noise canceling? Why do you have those on? Because of the noise in the warehouse. Sheriff Matt, will you retrieve those uh, headphones from Miss Wilson? I want to see them. Now, I'm going to put these on, Matt, and I want you to talk to me as loud as you see fit so I can see what this noise canceling is about. Now, when I point to you, Matt, I want you to talk to me. That green's a great color on you, Judge. <laughs> Say something again a little louder. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I see how this would muffle your sound. With these on, you prevent you an opportunity to hear him. I would expect no one to be there. And again, if someone had come to the dock and whatnot, and they did what they supposed to do by ringing the bell, it would alert me. Nobody had done that. But if you cleared it, then you shouldn't even have to worry about it being super loud because it was cleared. Everyone was on lunch. I think I've heard what I need to hear, folks. I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Ms. Wilson, have to prove that Mr. Atkins was wrong and that his wrong caused your injuries. You've had your heel torn off. You didn't know this was going to happen. When you figured it out, you were already in the heart of tragedy. Unfortunately, the law doesn't just look at your injury, it looks at everything. 
It looks at whether Mr. Atkins was wrong. Now, Mr. Atkins, you didn't expect she'd be in the safety zone. No, Your you Honor. You certainly didn't expect she'd be walking backwards with headphones on. No, Your Honor. But her actions don't absolve you of the responsibility to be safe. Now, part of being safe is to abide by the rules, and the rules require that you get some of her folks, I'm speaking right now, that you get some of her folks to help with this forklift, and this may not have happened. Here, I find, Ms. Wilson, that you proved that Mr. Atkins was wrong. He should have waited because it would have been safer. Because he was wrong, this injury is his fault. And I find that you are entitled to $250,000 for past medical expenses, $150,000 for future medical expenses, every penny of $2 million for permanent scarring and disfigurement, and I'm giving you $2.7 million for your pain and suffering for a total award of $5.1 million. It's my family business, and this... Oh, my... That is my final award, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> Mrs. Gray, I understand that you are here suing Mr. Henderson for a pretty bad nose injury that you sustained while at his haunted house. Uh, I've looked at the court documents, you've submitted your bills and some other documents. It's my understanding that you are suing for $38,000 in medical bills, $8,000 in lost wages, and $50,000 for pain and suffering for a total of $96,000. Now, Mr. Henderson, it's my understanding that you say she was there to be scared, not your fault, uh, this is her doing. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, Miss Gray, tell me how we got here. My best friend and I uh, have been best friends for like since third grade. Since third grade, yes. So y'all uh, even look at each other with love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone knows that we're Janina's. Heather will be too. Heather here is a bit of a fright freak. Uh, we are best friends, but we're very different in in our in our uh, taste of of you know excitement. So like she loves those kind of things. And I do not. But uh, Heather won two tickets for this haunted house, uh, and everyone was talking about it, our other friends. So I was really excited. So I was did like, Did you go to last year's? I did not. I haven't, I've never been. So you really didn't know what to expect? Yeah, n not at all, because, you know, I always skip it. So uh, I decided to go and we planned, and I was actually really excited. Now, Mr. Henderson. How long have you been running this uh, haunted house? Uh, Your Honor, uh, we've been in business for over 17 years now. And, and what's the goal? Uh, we're all about the experience, you know. Uh, we, we want every person that crosses our threshold to feel like they just to come to an event. You know, so we lay it on thick. We hire the best costumed actors to portray our characters. Uh, 17 years, we've never had an issue. Tell me this. Most of the haunted houses I've been to are these kind of warehouses that they rent for a couple days around Halloween, mm -hmm. and you go in there and people scare the hell out of you. Was it that kind of thing, dark and, you know, creepy? Yes, yes, it was, it was very dark. It was, there were a lot of attractions. It was, they do, they did put a lot of effort into it. Okay. Well, I, it, it harkens me back, because I've got three sons. I used to take them there. I was always worried about them getting away from me, because they were certainly going to get scared. Right. But uh, it was always very dark. Yes. A lot of strobing lights and then loud noises, scary noises. I see Mr. Henderson nodding. That's, that's really the atmosphere. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. I mean, you come to a haunted house to be frightened. I mean, that's the whole intent and purpose of a haunted house. And, and you knew that, right? Yes. You knew you were going to be scared. Yeah, so I definitely knew I was going to be scared. So I get ready. We get there. She shows the, the free VIP tickets. Why VIP? What did that allow you to do that the regular folks don't get to do. They took us to, through a separate entrance, which was great. Were you excited? Yes, I was excited. <laughs> was, was Heather excited? Of course I was. How long had you been inside before the bad stuff happened? Probably about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, going through, taking our time, going through the, the, the different rooms and attractions. And so we and get... you had been scared, right? You'd been in there a while, things are jumping out at you. And... Yes. So what happened? So we get into this hallway and it was very, very dark and we get separated. We okay. lose each other and that's when everything changed. Did getting separated from Heather add to you uh, being insecure in this place? Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay. I was only there in the first place because of her and for her. So uh, I, I'm looking for Heather. I am 
overwhelmed, freaking out right now. And then to make everything worse, a chainsaw guy jumps in front of me with his chainsaw and it's loud and he's coming at me. Scared the hell out of you. Scared the hell out of me, Your Honor. <laughs> and uh, my reaction was to back up. And then I feel something on my shoulder. What did you feel? There are hands, like hairy hands. Okay. Look back. <laughs> it's a werewolf okay. character, huge werewolf character, touching me, and I, I immediately freak out and run. That's the, the. Did you know where you were running to? No idea. I couldn't even see. It was pitch black. You're no just one running away from the werewolf. Of course, I was running away. I wanted to get away from him. And so you start running. Then what happened? So I run, and as soon as I start running, I hit a brick wall. I hit. Now you can see from the size of my nose and playing football in college, <laughs> I've broken that nose a couple of times. So I'm I'm feeling those days. What, what were you feeling when you hit that wall? Immediate shock and a lot of pain. You broke your nose. You, I'm sure you understand, Your Honor. It's right. a very painful situation. Right. This, a lot of blood. This, this looks like it hurts today. Yes, it, it does. Uh, blood everywhere. I'm very dizzy from the concussion. Okay. And I'm just distraught at this point. Now, Mr. Henderson, do you remember when this incident happened? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I do. Take me to that night. I was on the premises that night, but I was not in the vicinity when it happened. I, I became aware of it uh, through uh, Mr. Greco and uh, Mr. Powell here, who were present when the incident occurred, sir. Um, okay. And, uh, well, you know, I just got to say this. Ms. Gray knew what she was getting into, Your Honor. She knew she was going to be scared, right? Yes, yes. I mean, you're, you're not saying that she would know she's going to have a broken nose at the end of the day, right? No, no, I Your Honor, not. no, I no. Hope. But what I am asserting is that this broken nose is due to her own negligence. She knew what she was getting into. Excuse me? You still got a little bit of the black eyes and this bandage. Yes, um, so what happened was they tried to fix it. This is you right here? Yes. Now, how fresh is this? Is this that day or the next day or something? I believe that's the next day, yes, the, the I, next I see morning. they actually got packing in your nose. Yes, they were trying to fix it without having to do surgery. That didn't work out very well, so I had to go ahead and, and get a nose job. Everything started to fall apart in my life after that. How does a nose and black eyes like you have affect you as a bartender? My face paid my bills, right? I need to look good. Mine to, too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Henderson, let me understand. You keep saying this not my fault, she was negligent. Why is this not your fault? She goes for a day of excitement and fun with her friend, right, to add to their memories, and she leaves with a different face. Uh, two reasons. First reason is that in 17 years, we've had half a million people come through, over half a million. Okay. Not a single person has been injured. You got lucky. And the second thing, and the most important thing, is that she got these tickets from a radio ad that, uh, in this radio ad, they actually clearly state that this is a frightening experience. Matter of fact, the catchphrase is in there, prepare to be scared. You've submitted that ad to yes, the court, right? Yes, yes, yes. Let's hear it. Experience your worst nightmare. Prepare to be scared as you enter the portal of darkness and paranoia. Prepare to be scared. Oh. Now, Ms. Gray, did, did you hear that ad? Your Honor, I do not listen to the radio. Again, my friend Heather was the one who entered the contest, listened to the radio station, and got the... So that's the first time you've heard that? It is the first time. But, Your Honor, the ticket that she redeemed when she got to our establishment clearly has stated on it, prepare to be scared. This is a ticket that you she had. You weren't prepared to be scared. I was prepared Sheriff to be scared. Matt, did you look at the ticket? You weren't prepared to ticket. have us there. Did you it's look at the ticket? It's as simple as that. You, you were not prepared ticket? to have us Did there. you read the ticket? Order in this court. Now, Miss Gray, you knew you were going to be scared, right? Of course, I and was... The fact that a chainsaw is there and somebody looking like they want to kill somebody, that wasn't surprising to no, you, No, not at all, Your Honor. I was totally prepared to be scared. I was not prepared to be in the hospital. I was not prepared to have to pay $38,000 in medical bills. If you right. wanted to go to the happiest place on Earth, you should have went somewhere else. I'm looking at your ticket. Uh, it says, prepared to be scared. Thank you. Sheriff Matt, show this to Ms. Gray, and then uh, get it back to me, because I got some questions about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Gray, you remember having that ticket, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, based on that ticket, and frankly, your, your understanding and experience with haunted houses, you knew they were going to scare the hell out of you. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. This was not the issue. His characters, to my opinion, were really lacking a lot of training, grabbed me and terrified me in, in such a way that is not safe. 
uh, Mr. Henderson, on your ticket it says, prepared to be scared. Yes, if sir. she didn't see the radio ad, and you know how people are with pieces of paper, mm -hmm. they just hand them yeah. to the, to big the bold ticket print taker, on that right? ticket, Your Honor. This big bold print on that ticket. And plastered all over every entrance are warning signs that say, prepare to be scared. You see this uh, uh, warning sign here? Is this one of your Yes, that's uh, one signs? of them, yes, yes. And, and where would something like this be? I believe that one might be at our VIP entrance, sir. Now, now Ms. Gray, that's as uh, plain as the nose on my face. I mean, you had to see that sign, right? Your Honor, there was no sign at the VIP entrance. We purposely put signs at every entrance because we want people to be prepared. We want people to be fully aware of what they're getting themselves into, okay. which is why we've had such an impeccable safety record. We train our employees on how to spot uh, potential dangers uh, for our guests, you know, and, and, and be proactive in situations to watch out for guests, which is what happened uh, for Ms. Gray. This Your actually happened. Your employee created the situation. Now, Mr. Henderson. Ms. Gray is kind of pointing the real finger at, at your employees. It's my understanding you brought a couple of those uh, employees did. here. I really would like to hear from them since they Absolutely. were there. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, so this is uh, Vito Greco. Here's our chainsaw, uh, our chainsaw cosplay actor. Oh, yeah. and, Mr. Uh, Greco, this is Kenny Powell. please step to the podium. You were the chainsaw guy? Yes, yes, Okay, Okay, and, and uh, you actually had a real chainsaw in there? No, it was actually a prop. I is this you? Uh, yes, yes, uh, Your Honor. <laughs> do you go through training for this job? Yes. Uh, okay, I, what kind of things are you trained to do other than try to scare people? Uh, besides scaring people, just uh, trying to spot dangers to, to see if people are actually too frightened of where they get themselves trip, fall, anything along those lines. Now, if somebody looks like they're too frightened, do you th are you trained to kind of back off? Yeah, just b break character and not, not scare them. Sorry, Your Honor, he did not. When you're doing your thing, is that chainsaw on? Does it do? Actually, I, I brought it with me if you'd like to take a look. Pick it up for me. Yeah, it's this one, and it makes noises. Show me how you did it, but I, I know Miss Gray is not as, <laughs> as uh, big and muscular as Sheriff Matt. Get as close to Sheriff Matt as you got to Mrs. Gray. Mm -hmm. Turn it right on. Here. And what are you doing with the chainsaw? Right here. Okay. <laughs> Matt, you don't look very scared, okay? <laughs> you, you may step back to the podium. So tell me what you remember happened that day, Mr. Greco. Me and Kenny usually work together, and yes. we usually have our same routine. What's he doing while you're in Miss Gray's face with he the chainsaw? Is, he is the, the werewolf. Okay. So, so he pretty much, uh, he waits on my cue and then pops up after him. Now, let me hear from Kenny. So, yeah, my job, like as he said, is to usually, I stand on the other side. Okay. So when they back up, I'm there to scare them. And what uh, do you do to let them know you're present? <laughs> <laughs> what do you remember happened this night? Did you jump out like you usually do? Well, so this night was a little bit different. She actually started to run and then she was backpedaling okay. and I just saw she was going to injure herself really bad so I put my hands on her shoulder and then she just freaked out and turned around and that's so if she's backpedaling and you put your hands out you caught her yeah I saved her you I helped grabbed her. me no I helped you you did address, not help address me address your yes, comments to the court your injuries could have been much address worse address your comments to the court your honor he yes, grabbed me sheriff matt would you get that uh, hairy hand for me <laughs> So the, the grab or the, was it, was it on the side? Was it on the top? I mean, this was, kind of thing? Yes, it was on the top, Your Honor. And I don't understand how he claims to be helping me by grabbing me. Mr. Powell, I put this thing up on my shoulder like this. Is that about how you uh, tried to catch her? Yeah, it was a little bit like more right on the edges of her shoulder just right. to kind of stabilize her. When you caught her, did you say Rawr! like that? No, not at that point, no. What are they doing after you hit the wall? What are, what are uh, Mr. Powell and Mr. Greco doing? Well, they are now trying to help me, and thank God Heather showed up, so, you know, when I opened my eyes from being dizzy, I saw her. We keep talking about Heather. I want to hear from Heather. When you arrived on the scene after your friend had hit that wall, what, what was going through your mind? She basically had a concussion, so it was so hard just to see my friend in so much distress. Did she ever say she was caught or grabbed or anything of that sort? She just kept saying she was grabbed by these hairy hands. And okay. I was like, I was very confused on what she was talking about until I saw the werewolf. Thank you, Ms. Heather, for your testimony. You may be seated. I've heard all the testimony that I need. I'm ready to make a decision. 
The legal framework for any personal injury case is that Ms. Gray has to prove that you were wrong, that you did something wrong, and that your wrong caused her injuries. Clearly, you're injured. Here, there was uh, competing evidence. That is, you go into a haunted house, you expect that you and your girlfriend are gonna have another memorable experience, and then someone grabs you and you end up running into a wall crushing your nose. Mr. Henderson, all day you've been protesting about you have no responsibility. You put up signs, you put out a radio ad, you did everything you could to let her know that this was gonna be a scary experience. When I looked at this ticket, I was impressed that prepared to be scared, yet another affirmation that you're getting what you paid for. I looked at it closely, the warning in the fine print, Warning, event may be too intense for children under 12 years of age. That's clear. No touching the characters. And it had, that reminds me of my brother who actually punched one of the characters in the haunted house. <laughs> but this last line of it makes me ticklish about this and it goes into the proof of wrong. It says, characters will not touch you. The evidence is clear that the werewolf touched Mrs. Gray. The way it was described with the, the hand on the shoulder, I understand why you panic, but I'm not giving you the full $96,000 because you were 49% responsible. Because you decide to run into the wall. I find in your favor and against Mr. Henderson for $48,960, which is 51% of what you originally sought from this court. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs>